Yo, 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 what's up, YouTube? Dirty Dan Gaming coming back with another Viking Rise video. And today we are going to be giving you all of the best beginner tips and tricks that you need to successfully set yourself up for the future in Viking Rise. We're going to talk about prosperity level. We're going to talk about gem usage. We're going to talk about important buildings and structures that you need to just purely optimize your gameplay as you are starting your journey in Valhalla. That's not what it's really called, but without further ado, let's check it out. What's up everyone? So here we are day two and a half in Kingdom 64 on Viking Rise. It honestly feels like more than that, but that is just what you get for grinding, I guess. So again, we are two and a half days in. You can see this worldview map uh, after you progress to about City Hall level four or five or your Chief Hall City four or level five. So if you zoom out enough, you click on the little world icon, you will see uh, the list of kingdoms and then you can click on your own kingdom to see the time and days since it has been opened. So since we are here, this is going to be probably the most important thing that you want to do in the beginning of your journey in Viking Rise is make sure you're starting in a new server. If you're just downloading the game, it's going to plop you into whatever server is going to be the newest, which would be Kingdom 68. Now this kingdom is about 10, 11 hours in almost already. Now, this is really kind of getting to the borderline of when you kind of don't want to be in this kingdom. You really want to start fresh. If you can start when that server just opens, that is going to be the most ideal thing uh, that you can do. Because again, this a lot of a lot of the city builder aspects is is the the time and the grind that you have to put in. So the earlier you're starting on a kingdom, the more advantage you are going to have. So if you do drop into a server after downloading the game and you notice that it's been open for a little while, or maybe just chill out, try to learn the mechanics and the functions of the game. And then once you notice a new kingdom open, go ahead and start a new account in that kingdom. And the way that you can do so is if you go to your avatar icon or your profile picture, go into settings, go into manage characters, and then you can create a new character in any kingdom. So, but you want to go all the way down and find the newest kingdoms that are open. Here. Second tip that I can give you for the best things to do as you're starting an account, you have to be crazy, crazy active. For those who might be a little bit new to my channel, uh, I did do a seven and a half hour stream upon starting this account. So I think it was on Saturday. So uh, that just goes to show how much grinding you should really try and look to put in uh on the first day of your account now it doesn't have to be all in one shot i'm a little bit of a psycho and i'm trying to get content so uh, you don't have to put in seven and a half hours straight but we're having a good time doing it. i'm gonna leave a card up in the top if you guys want to check that out so you just kind of skim through that um you do see the pro progression of me pretty much pushing from the very start of the game or the very start of my account to i want to say like chief hall 10 or something like that so we got a good amount of grinding in you want to be active and and to that next point of pushing my chief hall to level 10 and as you guys can see here i am at chief hall 14 now you do kind of want to push your power in the early stages of your account why do you want to do this a lot of the top alliances are going to have power requirements you're probably if you log off on that first day for any more than a few hours you're probably going to get kicked from that alliance. This is why I'm saying it is beneficial for you to stay active and grind for those for, for that first day, day and a half or so, until you can really get situated into an alliance and become comfortable and make some friends. And then maybe you can kind of slow down the power pushing a little bit. But when we started this account and you can see on my stream, I, I was spending a little bit of money and I was pushing my account to make sure that not only myself, but my friends would be able to maintain their spots in the number two alliance that we were able to hop into. Um, I did want to get into this alliance because it was a number one alliance, but we got into the number two alliance. They were, happy, they were, they were more than kind enough to uh, give us a home for that day and a half. And then I actually got kind of got called up today into the number one alliance. So thank you to the VHRG leadership team for allowing me to come over. This leads me to my next point is make sure you find 
a good alliance. You want to make sure, if I think once you get to Chief Hall level eight, you're going to have access to these rankings. So you're gonna have tribe might, tribe kills, flag towers, gathering kill, uh, chief kills, chief might. Uh, what you wanna look at is your the tribe might, okay? So as you go to tribe might, you do want to look for the strongest alliances. Why do you wanna do that? You're, there's gonna be the most power there. Another thing that you can do too is look for where the whales are. So this is something that I did. I noticed that at the, at the time, this leader player, uh, he was the strongest player in the server. So VHRG were, were, was my top choice because they were number one. And then Click was my second choice because they had the strongest power player in the server, which means he's probably spending, which means that there's probably a good amount of Alliance gifts that are dropping. Is this a little bit, you know, moochy and, and, and kind of gold diggerish? Yes, absolutely. But that's part of the game, okay? And that is part of the reason why you should really try to push your power a little bit. Uh, I know a lot of people like to hoard and save for events, but in those first few days, if you can't get situated into into one of the top alliances, then you're kind of you're kind of missing out because, again, first off, the helps. Make sure you're utilizing your helps. So if you go into your alliance tab and you go into your assist. You can see here that uh, my helps are maxed out. I'm actually not, uh, my, my wall is upgrading here, but I started that in another alliance, but you can see that my divination shack is going and I'll just go ahead and speed that up for content sake. And then if we go ahead and upgrade this, you can see that the helps will start to pour in and I will get time reductions off of my building. There's a few helps coming in right now. Now, going back to the alliance kind of points, uh, this is a really, really big reason why you want to make sure on top of the helps, this is a really big reason why you want to make sure that you're in a really good alliance is because of the gifts that you're going to be getting. So I believe level five is the highest. That's probably about a hundred dollar bundle that these guys are buying. So if you go ahead and you start opening some of these, you'll notice uh, that this right here is 75 minutes worth of speed ups. That's almost what? That's almost 75 minutes. 75 minutes worth of speed ups. Here, we are getting uh, items to upgrade our buildings. I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head just yet. Uh, 30 minutes speed ups. VI uh, prosperity points. I, I'm all my ROK lingos. I'm still trying to fight it, guys. I apologize. Uh, more speed ups. Materials for war, which people are going to be able to donate uh, to you. And we'll kind of cover that in another video. But these are just more gifts, more gifts and goodies, resources, items that you need for building three hours worth of speed ups for uh, research, uh, food, resources, building speed ups, like it, it, a lead off loot you're gonna be getting for the event uh, that is going on right now. We have a card up in the top four, probably the best free to play event uh, that opens up the game with lead off in hiding. There's just so much benefits to being in a top tier alliance that you really wanna do all you can to make sure that you are getting into one of these. And the best way to do, to do that is to make sure you're staying active and push a little bit of power. I know there's probably some juicy events that people might be wanting to save for, or you're wanting to hoard your speed ups. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. And just one more quick note on gifts. You're going to be getting these two green crystal chests, and I don't think I can see what's in them, but um, every time this fills up, which should be somewhat often, um, you're going to be getting rewards so we'll, we'll touch on that on a later video as well so make sure you're in a good alliance we're settled into alliance we're starting to push power doing this this and that so what are we supposed to do what direction are we supposed to be going in once we're in our you know kind of city village area i did kind of mention this in my city building video i'll leave another card up in the top for you on that, make sure you're always upgrading your tribe hall. This is going to increase the amount of helps that you are going to be getting for your upgrades. So as soon as you upgrade your chief hall, make sure you're upgrading your tribe hall. And then I would go out on a limb as to say, as soon as you're done with tribe hall, then upgrade your academy. You're starting to push through these objectives and your chapters. You're, you're unlocking villages, you're unlocking, you know, all these cool little knickknacks and stuff. Well, the main thing that you guys should all be pushing for is this skill shop. Everyone should do everything in their power on the first day of their account, I would say. I'm telling you guys, you gotta grind on the first day. This is probably one of the most important buildings uh, in, in the game, in my opinion. So 
This is going to be giving you the ability to purchase skill shards, which is going to unlock other skills for you and is going to give you items to ink to level up your skills as well. And you can see that I've made some purchases here and those are purely with resources. I'll go ahead for content sake and use 200 gems to get a refresh. And here you can see 81,000 for 15 skill shards on a few blues. And I'm sure you'll get lucky too. Like here's some epic. So if you're a whale, go ahead and, and throw some gems on there. And then some skill experience items as well to upgrade those. So again, I, I in my personal opinion, this is one of the most important buildings in the game and you need to get to this on the very first day. Like do not waste any time getting to this building. Uh, another little quick tip I would say is make sure you're utilizing your squad base. So this is going to be giving you, I need to upgrade it actually too. This is going to be giving you passive experience for some of your heroes. So as you can see here, I have Waltham and Spine and I'm actually going to collect their experience and I'm going to remove them. So Waltham and, and Spine are going to be your, any of the blue commanders are going to be your, your gathering commanders. You are going to have some gathering commanders which are of the epic tier or the purple tier, but I wouldn't advise upgrading them just yet, just because you're simply not going to have the, the shards for those heroes. Uh, and if you do, then great, you're lucky, but I wouldn't invest the universal shards. What are universal shards, Dan? So universal shards are going to be these, where you can just, uh, just dump them into any commander that you want. For me personally, I'm saving for Elena because I want to be an archer main. I'm not even using these into Ivor. Um, I'm saving all of them for uh, Olena because that is who I'm going to be pushing. And you can see here, I've opened up a good amount of Oracle Soul, Soul Stones. And uh, you know, some of Ivor, uh, Cecia, Eric, he's one of the gathering commanders, but like you're not getting as much as the blue um, uh, blue commanders or the rare the rare hero shards you're not getting as much as the rare heroes uh where these guys are going to be giving you gathering boost so make sure you are um throwing some of your farming commanders in your squad base and speaking on experience make sure you are taking advantage of these rune beasts that will be spawning at your altars your shrines uh they will be there's i think they're turtles you want to make sure that you're killing these with your alliance because not only they're going to be giving you experience for your heroes as you kill them, they are going to be dropping runes, which are going to help with reducing building time, uh, research time, uh, farming bonus percentages. So you always want to make sure that you're trying to optimize the percentage buffs that you're going to be getting from anywhere within the game. And this is going to be one of those ways on top of getting experience for your heroes. Real quick on talking about percentage boost academy a lot of people will go in and push military tech if you're in a peaceful kingdom and there's not much fighting or if you're in a top alliance and people aren't messing with you you really don't need to push this unless it is to help you with some of your chapter quests right but i think just upgrading some of your commanders like ivor is who i would primarily suggest on you investing in until you find uh the the pikeman or the archer hero that you want to invest i would stay away from this military tech go into economy and try to push for construction speed two i think you're already getting construction speed one you are getting construction speed one right off the bat so five percent acceleration and then this is going to give you all the way up to 15 percent up here as soon as i get this to level five and then if we go to research speed one over here this is also going to be seven percent for research speed and then i believe there's more construction speed level three which this will give me 30%. That's giving me a grand total of 50% increased construction speed on all of my buildings. And then research speed over here, you're gonna get another 18%, which is gonna be 25% on research. So don't forget about those. You wanna make sure that you're, you are optimizing as much as possible to reduce the cost and the time that these buildings and these researches are going to need. We talked a little bit on commanders and and the ability that the squad base is going to offer you in terms of upgrading your farmer commanders. I want to just really quickly touch on commanders again. Make sure you are kind of taking a min-max approach to these commander setups. I think the experience and the shards are going to be very hard to come by. So you really need to kind of pick one or two from the epic tier and then the legendary tier. So like me and my friend were talking, me and my friend Jake were talking about this earlier today. I'm going strictly for Elena on epics, so all of my universal 
epic shards are going into Olena. I'm going to bring up Ivar a little bit because he's you're getting passive shards from him through doing some of these chapter quests. So he is kind of worth upgrading and he's got a really good kit too, which works with multiple troop types. And then you really want to just pick one legendary hero. You're not, you're going to spread yourself thin if you're going to go for two and especially three, unless you're a whale and you're spending heavy into this game, don't spread yourself thin. Pick one commander, work on those for epic and legendary, finish them, and then move on to the next ones. It, it, there, these these types of games, you really need to be patient with the heroes, commanders, you know, captains, whatever they're giving you, um, because the, the items that you are given to upgrade them, they come around oh so often. So you really wanna make sure you're optimizing those and taking your time when it comes to investing your commanders. Hell, I haven't even brought Ivor past 21 because I don't want to spend EXP books until I get Elena because I'm going to pump Elena as soon as I get her. So um, again, just really be cautious with how you are investing into your heroes. And then one more last quick note that you can do to help boost your hero experience is make sure you're killing Niflung. So if we bring one of these guys out here, Ivor, and I'll put Spine with him, we can go out and kill a Niflung real quick. You are going to get experience for defeating Niflungs. We can open up the report real quick. And the reason why I put Spine behind him is again, he's one of the farming heroes who is going to be giving me nice buffs to resource collecting. It's going to, again, everything's about shortening the time in these city builder games, especially in the, in the early game. And it really optimizes you for late game and end game, end game gameplay when you're able to get all of these percentage reductions for building and for research and for, for gathering, training, all that stuff. It's all super important. Helps save your speed ups, pretty much essentially saving you money and time. Next thing I want to talk about is prosperity level. Ooh, as reset hits, this is perfect time. Look at this. So prosperity level is very important. So it's going to give you some very nice buffs and some nice goodies uh, as you begin the game. So I have pushed to prosperity level seven, and I think in my personal opinion, this is probably where most people want to get to as fast as possible. Well, why Dan? Let's just check out the prosperity levels. So over here, um, you're going to get construction queues, which is very nice resource gathering, patrolling efficiency, trade efficiency, and gathering efficiency. All things, again, all things that are going to be reducing and cutting down your time. Energy recovery speed. This is very nice for defeating Niflungs and Niflung leaders, giving you more energy throughout the day. Construction acceleration on your buildings. Research speed up on your researchers. Permanently unlock the second construction queue in your city. This is very nice because you only get a few of those items as you open up the game that are going to allow you to build two buildings at the same time. Moving on to five, you're gonna get a training, training percentage boost. And for each of these, you are going to actually be getting nice goodies every day every day at reset you're going to be getting these so five is really good to aim for because then you want you then you're going to start getting epic hero shards six is nice because you're going to be getting two on top of your second construction queue in the village so you'll have two uh builders that can upgrade things for you within your village and then lastly this is why i think seven is so important because you are now going to be getting oracle soul, soul stones and blessed soul stones every day Heroes and skills are huge in this game. You need to be utilizing everything that the game is giving you to obtain these Oracle Soul Stones as well as the Blessed Soul Stones. If we move on to Prosperity Level 8, it doesn't really upgrade much from there. And you can see that it is quite the boost to go up. This is, you know, for me, 33,000 uh, 33, gems I would need, I, I believe. Yeah, 33,000 gems I would need. So I'm just chilling right now. I'll take the prosperity points as I get them through through the Alliance. And then probably the next big one that people, people would wanna push for is prosperity level 10, because now you're gonna to start to get legendary hero shards every day. You're not gonna get the epic ones. So maybe it's, it's good. It's a good idea to stay and get the epics for a little while, and then go ahead and push up to prosperity 10 to get your legendaries. And I think this only goes up to prosperity uh, 13, Prosperity 12 is pretty nice. You can start to get two legendary hero shards every single day. And then over here, very much the same. So two legendary hero shards is the most you can get from Prosperity. Um, this is very important to push in the early in the early stages of the game. If you're getting gems, just go ahead and, and 
dump them into prosperity. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Speaking of gems, one, ooh, look at that. Beast Lair can be occupied, let's go. Uh, speaking of gems, one last thing I think everyone should take advantage of, if you have the ability to do so, buy these rebates. You're getting the gems back anyway. If you have the gems accessible to you, I would probably buy this first before pushing prosperity because this is going to give you a legendary seasoned worker. Here, again, the importance on Oracle Soul Stones. And then if you do have managed, you would need to get up to, you would need to have 20, 22,500 gems in order to get all the way up here. But again, you're gonna be getting them back. But you're gonna be, you're going to get a legendary skill, which I think is perfect for some of the archers that I'm going to be putting together. So uh, probably push the, rebate first and then push prosperity um both very important so lastly i want to talk about this is going to be a little bit of a longer video probably for my viking rise um peeps uh if you guys are new to the channel please uh consider subscribing if you're enjoying the content and hit that like button it's totally free and that's the best thing that you can do for the channel for those who are new yes I have a little bit of longer videos and I've done a pretty good job of keeping these somewhat short, but please keep in mind, I, I do run a little bit longer videos. So I'm working on it, we'll get there. Last thing that I think you wanna do is make sure you're optimizing your workers. This is also super important. This goes right in line with your wanting to reduce the time and the cost that is going to take for, uh, for upgrading your for upgrading anything in your city. So here you can see I have a few seasoned workers, which they're legendary workers, epic workers, uh, rare, then you have green, and then, uh, you know, these regular tired workers. So each of these guys is going to have uh, some kind of buff to them. So uh, this is going to be for training infantry, um, training infantry, this is for mining, the mining the gems in one of your villages. Uh, this is for running errands. Up here you have uh, scout speed increase uh, here is a um, this is for building so you can see here construction time minus two minutes it'll be giving me so you want to make sure that you are assigning your workers to the appropriate queues so as you can see here I have a legendary worker on my research queue and she is going to be cutting the research term time already by 10 minutes and then she's going to be increasing the research speed by 4%, she's gonna be buffing it down 4% for me. Uh, very much so like some of my building workers over here, uh, you can see minus 10 minutes, and then the 5% uh, addition um, to the building speed, and then very the very same for uh, Pearson over here, Pearson and Le Lakeisha. Very odd name for uh, for a Viking, but make sure you are uh, working, making, make sure you are paying mind to your workers and setting them up as best as you can. And then lastly, the last tip I got to say, which just kind of goes in line with being active, make sure you're doing all of your events. The events are uh, super important and they are going to be the lifeblood of you getting all of your goodies, all your speed ups, all your resources and stuff like that, that are going to allow you to develop your account a little bit further. That's pretty much it. Again, a little bit of a longer video, but we hit about nine, 10, 11, 12 points or so. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys got some value out of this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button. It's totally free. You could change your mind later if you say, hey, that dirty Dan guy's a jerk, but I don't think so. I'm pretty likable, I think. So with that, I'm out. Take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. Peace.